Our Watson boots mean business. They are the results of former Justin Boots CEO coming out of retirement to get back into the boot game like the industry's godfather. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. Today, we try out the men's and women's boots in this extended test review. Plus, if you're watching within the first couple of weeks of this video being posted, you have a chance to win a pair for yourself. Let's get into it. I'm just here to connect ya. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeremiah Craig and I'm joined today by my beautiful wife, Brenna. How's it going, Brenna? I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for clicking on this video today. If this is your first time here, please subscribe. We've had lots of requests from you guys to do an extended test on a pair of our Watson boots. And today we got the men's and the women's boots. Plus, if you're watching this video, within the first couple of weeks of it being posted, you have a chance to win a brand new pair in your size. We got two pairs up for grabs, one for the guys and one for the ladies. This is made possible by Pete's Clothing and Hodge Bootery in Belfouche, South Dakota. They've got R. Watson boots, Hondo boots, they got jeans, they got shirts. Plus, if you contact them to order boots or shirts or jeans and mention my name, Jeremiah Craig, you get 10% off your order. All of the ways to contact them are at Pete'sClothing.net. Now, without any further ado, let's break down the details of this boot with The Rundown. All right, Brenna, we have two R. Watson boots here today. The men's boots feature what R. Watson is calling Benedictine Sinatra cowhide on the foot and the top. But as a counter, they have a waxed split cowhide. And this wax split cowhide counter is specifically for spurs so it doesn't mar up the other kind of leather when you're taking them on and off. Now that's thinking. Mm -hmm. On the women's boot, we actually have black rough out foot and counter. But both boots actually, men's and women's, have a narrow square toe or a cutter toe. Our Watson though calls this their medium square toe. For heels on these boots, both are stacked leather heels. You gotta love to see it. On the men's, it's about an inch and five eighths. On the women's, it's about an inch and a half. The men's boot is 11 inches tall. And for once, the ladies have got it in height. The women's boot is 13 inches tall. For outsoles, both boots have leather outsoles and they're on there with Goodyear welts so that they can be resold. On the men's boots, you can see lemonwood pegs and brass nails. But on the women's, we only get the brass nails. On the lining of both of them, we've got really nice calf skin. It feels so, so soft. It really does, especially in that upper, oh yeah. And for an insole, both of them have a soft leather insole, so that means you got a little bit of foam underneath leather, and it feels really nice in here. I'm looking forward to trying these boots on. Mm -hmm. Our Watson boots are made in Mexico, and both of these are coming in at $300 at Pete's Clothing and Hodge Bootery, but you can save 10%. When you mention my name, Jeremiah Craig, when you contact them through phone, email, or social messaging, that brings the price down to $270. All right, so we talked about all the specs, but I'm excited to get these boots on my feet and see how they feel. Let's do it. All right, we got our R. Watson boots on right now, and Brenna, they're looking good, but what are your first impressions about the fit here? Yeah, the fit is a little odd. Um, these are a size six and a half, but we also tried the size six. Uh, the six and a half and the six seem to be about the same size, which was confusing. And both were still about a half size too big. So I'm not sure what's going on with the sizing. I'm not sure how to recommend a size to folks, but uh, the six fit like a seven and so did the six and a half. So. I, I wish they were a little bit smaller, but we'll have to uh, do some insoles and, and figure out where that sweet spot is. Yeah, I'm noticing that these are just a little bit big on me too. Uh, that's okay because I really like to wear thick socks, the Thorlos, like super padded 12 hour work shift socks. So these are gonna be a great boot for that sock. Um, I'm breaking in boots all the time, guys. 
And whenever I can wear those socks, I really enjoy it because it makes the break-in experience a lot better. Uh, so if you guys are looking for socks out there to break in boots, those are definitely the ones. So definitely just a little big, uh, especially compared to the Fenolios. Uh, their 12 Bs are uh, very much more snug than the R Watson. I might not say that it's a full half size bigger for me, but it is still a B width which is a huge value for me, especially because I am a true B-Width and R. Watson has B-Widths, which is an awesome value, guys. Tough to find. It's tough to find. But with Randy Watson, uh, CEO, founder of R. Watson Boots, uh, with him being in the industry for so long, of course he's gonna make something like that happen and I absolutely love it. All right, here's the POV. It's looking good, looking straight down at it. Brandon, what do you think of the cutter toe? I think they look really nice. Yeah, me too. I like the cutter toe. It's uh, very popular and trendy right now, uh, gaining some ground against the wide square toe with a double stitch welt. And I think that is a great alternative. Yeah, you can see on the women's that the stitches seem to be a little bit bigger than on the men's. Oh yeah, Just it does. something I'm noticing there. Not that it, it minds, but just pay attention to little things like that. If you are uh, seeing one boot or the other, there are, you know, small things that differentiate it. All right, well, we tried on the boots. We like how they look. We like how they feel, even though they might run a little bit big. Now it's time to see how they break in and that means it's extended test time. Let's go! We booted up for an adventure of international proportions. That's right, we drove up to the true north strong and free and crossed the border into Canada to explore the bridge of land separating Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, specifically Beamsville and the Beamsville Bench to learn about Canadian wine. Because wine is the first thing that comes to mind when we think of Canada. But we met up with our friends Allison and Steve to discover how winemaking shines in this area. Let's go! It's so bright! <laughs> and we started out at 30 Bench. And you could see Toronto from across the lake too. Yeah, it was such a beautiful day for a wine tasting, so come on in and see what Canadian wine is like with us. Here's a fun fact about Canadian wines in this area. The prevailing winds that blow across the lake keeps it warmer here than Buffalo and other areas of western New York, making conditions better for growing grapes. And 30 Bench had a really funky Riesling fermented with the yeast that naturally grows on the grape skins. I was driving so I wasn't able to taste much, but I sipped that one and it was awesome. Soon all the wine was gone and it was time to pick our favorites. The Riesling Wild Cask. For sure, Wild Cask. The Riesling Wild Cask. Wild Cask. <laughs> Riesling for me too. <laughs> Three out of four. All right, time to buy some bottles and head to the next winery on the list. Q. Oh, this place was so cool. <laughs> they specialized in sparkling wines and the majority of the wines they made were bubbly. They were such pretty colors too. Totally. Another Canadian wine fact of this region is that there's a lot of limestone and clay in the soil, which creates really unique runoff for water, allowing the vines to struggle just enough to create great fruit. All right, time for the favorites. The Amalia and the Blanc de Blanc. All right. The Pinot Meunier. The, the Rosalie wow. was very close second. My favorite was the Rosalie. It was yours. That was my favorite. Did everybody have a different favorite? Yeah, but I think all of our runner-ups are the Rosalie. Yeah. <laughs> it's not every day we get to come up to Canada and try wine, so we had to stock up and buy our favorites. And before we go any further, I think it's time for lunch. You always think it's time for lunch. True. So let's go to Canadian chain Burrito Guys, where we find deliciousness jumping into the mouth with the flavors of nature. Oh, God. <laughs> yep. And I got the biggest burrito they had. It was pretty good, and I ate the entire thing. Okay, big guy. It's time to get back on the road to our next winery. You got it. But just so you know, big burritos make me a little weird. That you don't expect. Hold on, everybody. Whoa! Just made it. <laughs> I have a burrito baby right now. I'm feeling great. Right. I'm gonna turn on the blinker now so they know that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. 
gotta love burritos. Now back to the wine tasting. Our next stop was Malavoir Wine, which was founded by Martin Malavoir. He was the director of motion picture special effects for the movie industry for a long time and helped design the leg lamp in The Christmas Story. One cool thing about Malavoir is that they were Ontario's first gravity flow winery, which means they use gravity to get wine from one stage to the next without using pumps and stressing out the wine. And that showed in the wines. They were so smooth. All right, it's time for the favorites again. My favorite was the Motiar. Yeah, Motiar. Nice, that was my favorite too. Cab Franc, come on. The Wizard Cabot. Our last stop for the day was the beautiful Cassaba Vineyards, where we started out with some more sparkling wine. There's nothing wrong with more bubbly. Definitely not. Another fact about the weather here in this part of Canada is that it snows much less than in Buffalo or Toronto, which is not intuitive. We were told the Great Lakes create a unique weather system where storms coming across Lake Erie miss this region, but hit Buffalo to the south, and the systems that go through Detroit go north. I never would have thought that being between two Great Lakes would make such a big difference. Now it's time to report on our favorite wines for the last time. Mm, 2010. Absolutely. Maritage. Mm -hmm. That's Syrah, the reserve. Yeah, that was pretty surprising for me. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. I think the Pinot Gris that we started with. I gotta say the Syrah too. We definitely learned a lot from our trip to the Canadian wine region in our R. Watson boots, and we look forward to visiting again. That Canadian wine trip was so much fun, Brenna. So fun. What was your favorite one? My favorite one was probably Malavoir. I like Malavoir a lot too, just because the whole place looked like a bunker where you could spend the apocalypse. And if there's any place there I want to end up, it's there because they have all the wine. And the snacks. <laughs> and the snacks. That's right. They had some awesome sweet potato chips there. It was great. I uh, definitely recommend checking out those wineries if you guys are interested. Now let's get to the, to the final thoughts for these R. Watson boots. Brenna, should you start or should I start? Because we had completely different experiences with these boots. We really did. Okay, let's get the the women's one out of the way because right. I think we have some different things to say there. This experience was frustrating to say the least. After trying on two different sizes, even with the help of the sales team, we still couldn't find the right size for me. Uh, the six and the six and a half were exactly the same size boot, which was frustrating. I wear a six and a half and that was still a half to a full size too big. So I was wearing the wrong size boots the whole time. I chose the six and a half over the six because the boot looked a little bit nicer. You would expect that the boot would look almost exactly the same, but actually the six and a half, the quality looked just a little bit nicer. I can't really put into words what it was, but when you put them next to each other, the six and a half just jumped out as being a little bit more finished, a little bit more high quality. Yeah, I think it's also that with different leathers come different colors. Since it's a natural thing, it takes dye differently, it takes a treatment differently since they're all different animals. And one of the things that I noticed was that the outsole and the edge here was very much lighter. It was so yeah. much lighter than this color, which I like this natural color a lot better than the other lighter natural color of those other boots. Yeah, I do think that the contrast between the really, really light and the black, I didn't like as much on that one. It looks nice on these, but again, this is not the right size. So I did have insoles in here so that I could wear them comfortably and give you guys a, an accurate review of what it was like to wear them. They fit my calf nicely, but maybe that's because they were a size too big, tough to say. Well, it's a bummer that you had sort of a sad experience with your R. Watsons because I really liked the experience that I had with mine and they are built just a little bit differently too, which we'll get into. Uh, this leather, this Benedictine cowhide is really soft. It feels like calf skin. Mm -hmm. So it was really incredible to break in. Really liked it. Also the heel counter is super stiff on this. They have two layers. They have leather and what they call thermal internal heel counter in here. So it's super, super stiff. And I really like that when it comes to uh, cowboy boots because you don't want this flopping over or anything. And this definitely doesn't have it in here. So that's a big difference between the men's and the women's, at least for these two boots. And also another difference is that the men's boots have lemonwood pegs and brass nails, and this just has the brass nails in here. Yep. So it seems like there's a lot more attention given to the men's boots than what they're given the women's boots, at least in this case here. And even though they are the same price. Yes. 
They are the same price at Pete's Clothing and Hot Bootery. Also for fit, I would have to say that these are just a little bit wider than some of the other B widths that I've tried, which was fine for me because I was able to wear a little bit thicker and more comfortable socks. And also the arch was higher. So if you guys out there are looking for cowboy boots that have higher arches, this definitely had a higher arch, which was kind of nice. It had some good support. It wasn't really that much bigger because I still had to use a boot jack at the end of the day to take them off. So like it was still a nice snug fit, but just a little bit wider up here, which allowed me to wear thicker socks and that was nice. Also the toe box sits much lower than some other cowboy boots that I've tried. So if you have problems with maybe your toes sort of pushing up towards the top of the boot, you're definitely gonna have a problem with this because I felt the bottom of this toe box on my foot, on my toes. It wasn't that big of a deal, but you've, if you already have a problem with it with some of your other boots, you're gonna have a problem with it here. Something that kind of does bug me just a little bit as a nitpicky thing is that there's wrinkles down here where this uh, square toe is. And that happens when they're lasting the boot and pulling the leather underneath the boot to make this toe shape. And the wrinkles is just something that I feel can be easily avoided and you can really tell a difference when you have a nice crisp square toe on this type of cutter toe rather than the wrinkles so if they just gave a little bit more attention from their factories down in mexico i think that this would look a lot better on that square toe if it was nice and crisp and tight so overall i think that for the price point of these boots it's worth it because they have b widths it's really nice to break in they have some little drawbacks like the lower toe box and the wrinkled uh, square toe here. Uh, but overall, I think it's a good deal for the price. But what do you think for the women's boots, Brenna? I think that the price is fair for the quality of the boot. However, I would not buy them online because I could not tell you what size to buy and the people at Pete's Clothing tried to help us the best that they could, but ultimately we couldn't find the right size. So if you happen to be in a store where you can touch them, feel them, try them on and find your right size, they're a great boot and I think you'll really like them. But unfortunately for the price, I, I wouldn't say that I would order them online. It's just too big of a risk. That's fair. And you guys can visit Pete's Clothing Hodge Bootery right there in Belfouche and try some R. Watsons for yourself. Not only that, but this is a giveaway as well. So we got two boots up for grabs, one for the men, one for the ladies, and here's what you have to do to enter. Make sure you like this video so it hits that YouTube algorithm so more people see it. Subscribe right now if you haven't yet, and the third thing that you need to do is fill out the form at the link in the description. I'm gonna need your email and things so I can notify you if you win, and I'll announce the winner on a Boots and Ballads live stream on Thursday, May 4th at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on YouTube. Make sure you're there. You won't want to miss it. It's a great time. And this is going to be the first one that's going to be on a Thursday. So make sure that you guys hit that reminder on the live stream announcement. Thank you so much for watching today. Thank you, Brenna, for joining me. And that Canadian trip was just a blast. So hopefully we get to do something like that again. Let us know if you want to see more of these joint reviews in the future down in the comments. Love you guys so much, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Bye. Getting back in the business and going back to his roots. That's why Randy started all Watson Boots. Why don't you check out this video up here about another pair of R. Watson boots right at Pete's Clothing. Or I got a music video down here I think you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe up here and I'll see you next time. Peace. Have a good one.